everyone. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Yes, today uh, it was the day of our long waiting for, oh, isn't it? Yes. Uh, let's read 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to, bat to battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rab, but David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from the, his bed and wait, walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and wa the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messenger and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And woman conceived, so she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Then David sent, a jo sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing, and how the people were doing, and how the world prosper, uh, prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house, and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. And so when they told David, saying Uriah did not go down to the ho his house, David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab, and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to, to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do, that, uh, do this thing. Yes, I read up to verse 11. Uh, today's topic is the consequence of David's spiritual relaxation. Uh, we often want to relax and we often want to take some spiritual vacation. Uh, during the COVID lockdown, did you take a long, good vacation in your spiritual life without attending church? But we continued our service through our WhatsApp, right? Although we didn't have gathering, but uh, by the grace of God, we were able to have this WhatsApp service. But sometimes while we are living in this world, Satan conceives and uh, Satan deceives us to have just free time without uh, putting myself into this church system or going to church, breaking my desire, and following the teachings and guidance of the Spirit. It always happens uh, while we are living in this world with this flesh. So people, more especially our brothers and sisters, while you are living this world, uh, having this spiritual life, uh, often Satan will come and tempt us to follow just easy uh, desire of the flesh. Because if you follow your desire, freshly desire, you can take your time, relax, and you don't really need to stress yourself 
bounding yourself under the guidance of God or uh, lean on your ears to listen to the spiritual words. Then we easily turn away from God and follow our own fleshly desire. Sometimes our brothers and sisters, when we live our spiritual life, Satan tempts us to do as we pleased, as our human body, as our flesh pleased, so that we can depart from God and disconnect this spiritual relationship and proceed following and satisfying our fresh uh, desire of the flesh much more. So when you are tempted by Satan, Satan always tells us what? Oh, you received salvation. You received forgiveness of sin. This forgiveness of sin is once eternal. So even though you go and follow your desire and sometimes fall into the temptation, you may commit sin and do some wrong deeds. But what did the Bible say? Your sins are forgiven once for all and you received this eternal redemption. So you don't need to worry about your bad behavior and sin because the sin is already forgiven. And God wouldn't punish you because of you following one or two temptation of Satan or temptation of this human body. This is how Satan drags our brothers and sisters, our holy saints, to follow the desire of the flesh instead of leaning to the spiritual life. So with that self-justification, thinking that I am justified, I am sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ, so even if I just live according to my desire, it will be okay. God wouldn't punish me. God wouldn't uh, give me any trouble. With such kind of wrong uh, justification, self-justifying sense, you easily follow the temptation of this world and follow the desire of our human body. In such a time, then what is really going to happen in our life? Through David's life, we will study how our life will be and what are the consequences of our uh, spiritual relaxation. When we listen, uh, when we read the Bible, <clears throat> this Bible explains the word of the heart in very accurate and detailed manner. So when you read the Bible, I don't know how many pages do you read the Bible for a day? Hello? How many pages Bible do you read for a day? Yes, at least uh, you need to read, at least if you are very busy, 20 pages. Huh? <laughs> normal pace, normal, uh, no, if you are not very hectic and busy, you can set 30 pages every day. 30 pages every day if you read, not, uh, what can I say, the paper, each page, the one page uh, is one side, the other page is the second page, right? So if you count the number of pages of your Bible, 30 pages for a day, if you keep reading such pace, then you will be able to read uh, six times for a year. If you read 60 pages, you can read 12 times for a year. Then, at least if you read 6, 10, 12 times, then you will be able to open your spiritual understanding and spiritual eyes to read the Bible and understand the spiritual meaning and will be able to interpret the Bible with the right understanding. So when you read the Bible, if you read one chapter deeply, when I usually preach the gospel, when I choose the topic, I choose one chapter and read all the story 
one by one, verse by verse. Then when I read the Bible in such detail and accurate manner, I can see, ah, now, why David had no choice but to commit a crime? Why David's life became so miserable? Why David had to suffer a lot of suffering, agony, hardship, sadness in his life? We all know David as a king of faith, isn't it? Yes, I also respect David and I also admire the spiritual life of David. So when I came to Eswatini, I chose my English name as a David. But David was not always faithful. David was not always spiritual. Why? Because David also followed his thought, followed his temptation, follow the desire of his uh, human flesh, end up as a consequence of following his own thought, his own mind, and following his human flesh, he went through a lot of troublesome situation. The result and consequence of him following his own fleshly desire was not just easy and nothing. There was a clear consequence of David following his human desire and human flesh. What I want to tell you, you may follow your desire, you may follow the fleshly thoughts and carnally mind in your spiritual life, but that's not just going to be end of following your human thought and human desire. There will be a definitely a consequence of you following your thought, your desire, a human idea. So through David, God teaches us and God clearly shows us God is a God of repayment. I think it will be your first time to listen God is God of repayment. I'm not saying that if you follow your thought, if you follow and commit sin, if you do the bad behavior, if you commit a crime, God is going to send you in the hellfire as a judgment. Because our spiritual salvation is based on the works of Jesus Christ. That is very clear salvation. That is one's eternal redemption for our sin, for our soul. Amen. But, but, when you live your spiritual life, if you continue follow your thought, if you continue enjoying your fleshly desire, if you continue set your mind into this world and pursue the prosperity of human, human flesh, and if you continue focus on your own individual life rather than focusing on the prosperity of God and prosperity of church and focusing on the will of God and focusing on the preaching the gospel. This spiritual goal, spiritual demand, spiritual guidance away from that if you continue follow your own human thought, human desire and set your own individual goals and enjoy your fleshly life, there must be a consequence of your life and choice what is going to be. This is what I would like to share with you today through this David story. Let's read verse by verse and try to understand why David had to suffer a lot through such a crime. And today I will also uh, explain the consequence of David following his own thought. Second Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. I will read verse by verse and explain the David's heart flowing. Verse 1. It happened in the spring of the year. It happened in the spring of the year. Here, Bible says, in the spring of the year, right? Before spring comes, what is the season? What's the season before spring? Winter. Winter. During the winter. Because of low temperature, the ground, 
become freeze and the weather is very low people do not have much activities during the winter right but what happened during the spring in spring now people start stretching not only we human even the nature and all the grass field even animals they start coming out from a deep winter sleep and try to practice something and exercise doing in any activities so while we are taking a very deep sleep in the winter by the time of spring when spring comes all the nature arise and wake up from the sleep and practice the activities now here in the bible in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out the battle to the uh, two battles the bible says now after the hard time uh, this winter tough season passed when spring comes now the kings are supposed to go to the battle for their nation so by this time, not only David, all the king of each, of each country, each nation comes to the battle to fight and destroy the adversary. Because they had to participate in the battle and defeat other enemy so that they are able to get all the prey, even possession out of that battle. So when you defeat the other party, other country, you can become a master country and instruct other countries to serve your country with all the food and all the possession and material that you desire to possess. So, as a king of the nation, it is very important and vital for them to go to the battle with their soldiers, with their army, and with all the people and nation, uh, the, the, the people of this nation to go and participate in the battle to defeat other adversaries. So through such experience, through such victory, king can be applauded and king can be exerted and be honored by the people of the nation. Oh, our king led our battle against Amalek. We won the battle against Amalek. So King David brought a lot of prey. Then people of that country will applaud David, right? And admire David and respect. Oh, our king really did good. Our king was very brave. You know how King David uh, went to the battle and defeated all that other soldier? Oh, our king gave us a very good strategy in the battle so that we could defeat these Amalekites. Our king is indeed a king of kings. So this is how king's duty in the battle was very vital and important at this time of spring. Then as a king, Let's think about this king participating in the battle. Although king is participating in the battle, the enemies, they are all going to try to attack the king, right? They all trying to focus to defeat and kill the king. So king also has to know how to fight with sword and how to protect himself with shield. And he has to be very fast of moving his body and riding a horse. At times he has to run away from the enemy. At times he has to protect himself away from the, uh, away from the enemies. So if you watch uh, the movie, old movies, Time of the King, they, these kings, they also practice of the battle and fight because they have to practice themselves to participate in the battle. Yes, nowadays, they don't need such practice because they all use one, weapons, armed weapons. So if you shoot from far, 
then that's game over. You don't need to hold the knife and try to kill someone or shield yourself. But long time back, by this time of the story that we are reading, they, even the king has to protect himself, know how to defend himself, and attack others, and kill, so that he is able to, they were able to protect themselves and win the battle. Then for king, thinking of going into the battle, can they sleep overnight? I mean, uh, can they just relax and follow all the desire of their flesh? Can they eat as much as they want? Can they drink all night? Can they play around with women? No. Why? If this king is thinking of getting into the battle, participating in the battle and lead all the, the team and the army soldier and making a good strategy, king has to study day and night of what? Oh, nowadays, in this Amalek, in this Palestine, who is the strong soldier? Who is the strong uh, king? What is their strategy? How do they plan to participate in the battle? Even king has to study day and night how are they going to come into the battle, with what type of strategy. And even king has to study in that other party, in that other nation, who is now strong leading soldier and leading army so that we can defend our own army and we can suggest, uh, they can suggest their good strategy on the, uh, on the battle. So King David also, before this time, as we read last week's service, uh, 2 King chapter 7, when king stayed in the palace with peace, what did he think? When he was in the palace staying peaceful time, he started to think of what? I am staying here in the peaceful palace, then, but the ark of the Lord is still in the tent. Then what shall I do for the ark of the Lord? So he started to think of building a temple, building a tabernacle for the Lord, right? When he had that sincere heart, royal heart to the Lord, God blessed David's life in possession, in his physical prosperity, and in all the battles he won, and he gained a lot of children, and everything was prosperous in the leadership of King David. When? When he united his heart to serve the Lord and doing the work of God. Amen? When he united his heart into the will of God and planned for the doing the work of God, when he first prioritized for the works of the Lord, God brought all the blessing and cares, protection upon the life of David, upon the nation of Israel. But now David, he started to have this heart of relaxing. Ah, I have done a good job and God bestows grace upon my life. I have achieved something that I desired for. Now I have done enough. All this nation is living prosperous life my, by my effort, by my trial, and I have done well. So he started to satisfy himself thinking he is doing good and he is doing well. At the time, Satan tried to deceive David to relax. Yes, you have done enough. You have participated in the every battle and defeated other enemies. You don't need to go every battle. You need also some time to relax. You need also some time to take a rest. Don't, don't, doesn't Satan give you such thought? You have attended all the Sunday service. 
You have attended all and participated in all the church walks. These days, uh, every Saturday, we gather, we, uh, gather our members together and make a bricks. Right? Last week, uh, Yuanje, he was shivering the soil. Uh, so I little bit helped him. I didn't do much work, but I little bit, I did help him a little bit for a short period of time. But while we were shivering the soil, uh, Sipo, Sipo is, she's not here even today. Sipo, Sister Sipo with Andile came at around 10, yes, after 10. Yet Andile came half past 8 with uh, Babe Shabang and he was doing all the shivering from half past 8 until 10. So he was sweaty and I also helped him working but it was tiresome. But by the time of uh, Sipo came at 10, now she became, she was so energetic uh, because she came late at 10 and just starting uh, shivering walks. So she was so fresh and she was so energetic and doing this shivering more powerful than uh, Luanze. So you know what Luanze said? Ah, Pastor, from next week, I will also come late. <laughs> I should also come late so that I can do the works very productively. So I said, no, no, no. You'd better to come on time and work for a long time until you finish. So when you see, let's suppose, Luanda is coming every Saturday and do the works. But when he see the other members come once in a while and Sipo came at 10 and doing the works and leave, then Luanda may think what? Ish. Why me have to come every Saturday doing these works? I am also busy. I am also studying. I am also uh, studying online, busy, uh, studying on the education. So let me just skip this weekend. Luanje, did you think of such? Yes. We always have such thought while we are doing diligent work. Ah, oh, I have done enough. I have done a good job. David has such kind of mind in him. What? Oh, I have done and participated all the better until now. And I defeated many enemies. I have gained this fame, honor, respect because of my hard work and good effort. Yes, now let me take a rest. This time around, I am not going to participate in the battle. This is what David thought and agreed in his heart. What? I am enough. I have done enough. I am tired. Now, let me take a rest. So while he was taking a rest in the palace, Satan does not lose such chance. What happened? Verse 2. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed. What time do you wake up? In the morning or evening? We all supposed to wake up in the morning, right? But why David woke up in the evening? Why he woke up in the evening? Because he doesn't have now self-control. He doesn't go to the better. He doesn't participate in the works of God. He doesn't go for the burdensome works. As a king, for him to participate in the battle, he has to train himself, right? He has to go to the gym and Jimmy, and he has to uh, train himself, and he has to also control his appetite to sustain his body and good weight because if he is so obese, if he is 
he, if he becomes too fat, he cannot ride a horse, right? The horse is going to collapse, getting very heavy king. So he has to lose his weight, he has to control his mind, he has to eat also what he is supposed to eat. And can he go out and play whole night because he wants? No, he has to control his, his desire. Although he look at the woman and desire to uh, play around, he has to go to bed on time and wake up early in the morning to train himself. So by the time David was living spiritual life, always standing for front line and participating in the battle, automatically he has to do what? He has to do the self-control, he has to control his body, control his desire, he disciplined himself. Amen. But at this time, accepting this relaxation, thinking that I have done enough, I'm not going to participate in the battle, today I am taking a day off, so I will relax. Then, what can he do? Yes, he can enjoy his night. If, if you don't go to work, the following day, more especially on weekend. Do you sleep on time or do you sleep a little bit late? Yes, you sleep a little bit late. Doing some internet surfing, googling, watching things on YouTube, and playing around with WhatsApp, right? Because he didn't have any duty. What? He, he was not standing on the forefront that he has to participate in the battle and doing the work of God, thinking of how to build the temple. Now he relaxes. Ah, tomorrow, what is my schedule? Oh, king, you can do whatever you want. Okay, then tomorrow, whole night, I am going to enjoy watching movie. Yes, by this time there was no movie though, but he can relax and enjoy his life, bringing the woman, having party, drinking, and reading novel, whatever he wants, he could do. So for the whole night, what were he doing? What was he doing? He was just doing to follow his desire. So he woke up very in the late evening. When he woke up in the very late evening, in his mind, in his thought, in his life, he is filled with what? Is he filled with the Holy Spirit? Is he filled with the thought of God? Is he filled with the guidance of the Lord? He is filled with what? He is fulfilled with this human flesh, human desire, temptation of the world. Because he spent much time now following his desire, following his flesh, following the things of the world. So David now woke up late in the evening and he went up to the roof to see whole nation. Oh, now in this evening, what other people are doing? On top of the city of David, you know, the city of David was on top of Israel. So on the top of Israel, looking all around, he saw very, very beautiful woman. I don't think there is such beautiful woman here. She, he saw very, 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 very beautiful woman taking a bath. Let's think about this David's heart now. When you look at the woman, brothers, Let's be honest. When we look at a woman, sometimes we can look at a woman, oh, she is beautiful, right? We can think of that, although you are married or unmarried, you can think looking at a woman, oh, she is beautiful. But does it mean that every person who look at a woman and who look at a woman with lust go and commit adultery? No. Why? Because we have this break. Do we have all this break system? 
Yes, at the normal time, when you are controlled by the Holy Spirit, when you are walking with the Lord, when your mind is stable, strong, although Satan give you such temptation, such desire, Holy Spirit and God will apply break. Hey, 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 no, 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 not that one. You have your wife, or you have to wait until God gives you the proper wife for you. Hey, 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 no, 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 not that man. Don't look at every man with lust. So this is how God is going to lead us and control us and control our desire. Amen. But at this time of David, David, he did not have self-control. He did not receive that guidance of God. He only followed the desire of his flesh. So when you look at the woman, beautiful woman, he was tempted. Up to this point, every normal human, every even brothers and sisters can be tempted by Satan in such a way. But, but now when David had no self-control, when David was not filled with the heart of God, when he was not living for the gospel, when he was not doing the work of God, he was, when he was filled with his own self-thought, self-desire, it was very easy for him to follow that desire. So, it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. Yes, it can happen. He can, he can look at a woman, bad thing, beautiful, and he must forget about that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, tomorrow, what am I going to do? Uh, yes, uh, our uh, uh, Minister of Defense, Joab, he is participating in the battle. Uh, let me send messenger to monitor what is happening in the battle. If I really need, I need to go and encourage them. So he should think of such things, general part of leading and politic, battle, war, but now, his mind is going into the wrong direction, getting into more and more deeper stage of following this desire. There are so many things happen in our mind because Satan sometimes tempts you with, uh, with the desire of lust. Satan tempts you with desire of possession. Satan can tempt you in any ways in our life, but when it is not all light, when it, or the issue of things abnormal, the issue of things deceitful, the issue of wickedness, we need to have this heart to forget about that and focus on the right things of right spiritual life and the Spirit of God and what God really wants me to do. These are the normal minds. But David, now his mind is getting into the abnormal situation, abnormal stage. When do we become abnormal? Any time when you are not following the guidance of God and doing the right work of God. So when David woke up at late evening, look at a woman, she was beautiful. Up to this point, it happened to every one of us. But the problem is, verse 3, So David sent and inquired about the woman. What does that mean? He is putting more weight into that desire of Satan, right? Instead of just forget about that, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, this is not good. As a king, only focusing on woman, looking at the beautiful woman, hey, this is not proper king's manner. Okay, let me think about that other major part of this, of this nation. He is supposed to behave and cut off such desire and temptation of Satan, but he lost his self-control power. He lost his self-disciplined mind. Now, he sent messenger to go and search and inquire who she is. Now, things are going wrong. And the messenger came back and reported the king, saying, 
she is Uriah's wife. Who is Uriah? As we read today, Uriah was one of the soldiers in the army working for the nation under Joab. So Joab was a master of all the soldiers, and Uriah was one of the soldiers in the army. And we read this story, he was very loyal and he was very diligent servant to the king David and to this Israel, right? When, king, when David called Uriah to cover his sin, to make him to go and sleep his wife, what happened? He didn't. He denied to go to his wife and sleep. Why? Thinking of what? All my master, Joah, and my companion, my people, all the soldiers are in camp. Now they are staying in the tent. They are fighting seriously. How can I alone go and sleep with my wife? No, that's not the proper way. So when you think about this Uriah, we can see the Uriah, he was very loyal. He was very diligent servant to the nation. David should know that Uriah was such a person and Uriah is one of his servants. But after listening to that, David decided to do what? After all that, if he heard that she is someone's wife, then at the final stage, aha, okay, let me forget about that and let me give up. This is how he had to apply the brakes in his mind and stop going further step, but he lost all his self-control power. Satan is filled within the mind of David and control him to follow the desire of Satan. This Uriah was following his thought, I mean uh, David, he follow his mind, his thought, but he is thinking now he is able to manage his life. So at this time when David followed his own desire and his mind, now he was not able to control himself. He was not able to control his desire. So he ended up committed uh, adultery with this Uriah's wife. When this Uriah's wife had uh, conceived, she reported back to David. Oh, king, I have a child. I have I conceived a child. So he uh, David, he is now trying to cover this, his sin. So when you think about this David's sin, David, he followed his desire, he followed his own thought, he just focused on his desire of the flesh and end up he committed such a serious crime. As a result, as a consequence of David's crime, what did God do? What did what happened to David? Uh, the, the baby he begot through that Uriah's wife. God killed that baby. Because God was very, very annoyed about the life of David. David, I have done all that good works for you. But David despised God and David forsook God and David, he denied the guidance of God. So as a, as a result of his crime, when the prophet Nadan came and rebuked David, David repented. Through the repentance, God immediately forgave his sin. If you are curious, uh, please read 2 Samuel chapter 11, 12. Then there is a story how David's sins were forgiven. I'm not, I'm not now talk about David had to receive the 
uh, punishment by his behavior, God has forgave him. God has forgiven all his sin immediately through Nadan. But God did not just let left him to live as it is. After that, the more serious sadness and troubles happened in the life of David. As a result of that, his son Amnon loved uh, his his what the sister from other mother, who is Tamar. So Amnon and Tamar both they were the children to David, but Amnon loved Tamar and acted as if he was sick. So he asked his father David to call Tamar to cook for him. So at that time, what happened? Tamar, when came and cooked for the, the, the Amnon, Amnon raped this Tamar. This is what, what is happening in this family of David. The same siblings raped and committed a sin. Such a shameful incident, isn't it? As a king, then every, all the other people of Israel, how would they think about the family of David? And that was not the end. This Tamar who was raped by his brother, Tamar's brother was Absalom. Absalom was very angry against this Amnon and Later on, he made a plot to kill this Absalom. So, by the permission of the King David, he gathered all the brother of uh, his old brother and he committed a murder. He killed his brother Amnon, who raped his, her, uh, his sister. And among the brothers and sisters, siblings in the family of David's now committing murder and rape. Such a shameful situation continue to happen and as a result, at the end, Absalom conspired against his father David. So father David had to escape from the palace with bare foot, crying, and went through a lot of shame and suffering. That, that was not the end. During the day, Absalom raped and committed sin on the roof of the palace against these ten concubines of David. David left his ten concubines in the palace and the Absalom, his son, came and committed the concubine of David. What's happening in the life of David? Can you really imagine how David went through such trouble, sadness, and agony in his life? He must be so uh, disappointed and he must be so depressed and he went through a lot of challenge and troubles. While he was going through all such suffering, do you know what David thought in his mind? Why God troubled me in all such trouble and difficulties? These are all what? The consequence of my spiritual relaxation. Once I accepted this relax, once I followed my human, fa human desire, it seems that God does not repay back immediately in a prompt way, but through that, if we set our mind into the life of the flesh and follow the desire of flesh, then we easily follow the human desire which is from Satan. Then as a result, God repay back to the life of David, corrupted life. Let's read uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Colossians is after Romans, Colossians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. 
Can anyone read verse 22 through 25? Amen. When we live our spiritual life, sometimes we are required to do the church works, and we are obligated to the preach the gospel, and we are given a certain duties in the church to be part of the serving team of the church. And although you are not in a certain position in the church or having any duties, we are all children of God, then as a children of God, we are the born the servant of God and child of God. We have our obligation how to live our life, what to do in our life. And as a matter <coughs> of number and as a matter, matter of course, we have to serve the Lord and preaching the gospel and participate in the church activities. These are just our normal obligation and normal duty as a Christian. But there are many people who just follow their own thought, their own mind, their own desire, thinking, oh, why do I have to do all that works? Why do I always have to attend to the call and attend to all the activities of the church? pastor will do that, and someone else may do that. I have done enough. I have done this and that part. I am not going to be every activities of the church or duty calls for the church works. If you are following your own little relaxation, oh, I have done enough. I have done this and that. Oh, this is the part that someone else can do, not me. When you accept such relaxation in spiritual life, we easily tempted by Satan like David to live such prodigal and deceitful life. As Bible says here, verse 24, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the rewards of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. When we serve the Lord our Christ, we receive what? We receive what? Reward of the inheritance. When David had the heart to build the ark of the Lord, when David had that heart to build the tabernacle of the Lord, God prospered his life, God provided all the necessary things, and God uh, allowed him to win in every battle. Amen. This is the reward that David received from the God, from the Lord, when he served the Lord with all his heart. But verse twenty-five says what? But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. This repayment is not the eternal judgment or eternal uh, damnation. Once we receive salvation, this salvation is by the grace of God. And even our life, after the salvation, we are supposed to live according to the Spirit of God. Amen. Don't be complicated in your mind. Then if I do wrong, does God punish me? 
It is not that, that you have to fear or afraid of God's punishment, but you need to keep this fear in your heart. Fear the Lord. Why? Because God will obviously, God will definitely repay back to your behavior and your mind. The way how you live your spiritual life. Which means you cannot just live anyhow following your desire, following the temptation of the world, thinking that you can do only this part and that part and I'm not going to be obligated to do this and that heavy things and heavy duties of the church. Someone else can do, not me. So when you accept such relaxation in your mind, we can easily follow the temptation of the world and fall into the deceit of Satan. Bible says that God is God of repayment. So let's read one more verse. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 4. Isaiah 49 verse 4. Can anyone read in English? Sometimes we think, and Satan deceives us, hey, although you worked, labor for the church, and you did a lot of works and sacrifice for the Lord, what have you gained? You have labored in vain. And you have spent all your strength for nothing. Do you see, did you receive a very prosperous position? Did you become rich? Did you become better while you are serving the church? While you are giving tithe, while you are doing the work of God, while you are participating in all the church works, what is the result? What have you gained? What is the benefit? This is how Satan deceives us, right? Then, what does Bible say? Someone will say, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. This is whose voice? Whose voice? Satan's voice. Yet, surely my just reward with, is with the Lord and my work with my God. Who knows that I am diligently working for the Lord? Who? Pastor? Church member? Someone else will recognize your labor? Who knows that you spend all your strength for the work of God? Are we doing the work for the recognition by other people? Or we are working for the Lord our Christ? We all, brothers and sisters, we receive salvation by His grace. Then we are now whose? We all became Jesus. Amen. We all became His servant. Amen. Yes. We are all His born servants. Then we are supposed to, we are obligated, we are supposed to do the work of God, preaching the gospel, doing the work of God, participating in also building of the church. God has given such works in Eswatini Church, then this is God's work that God has given to me to do. It seems it is very burdensome, heavy, but this is the yoke of Christ. Jesus said what? If you are heavy laden, come unto me, I will give you rest. If anyone wants to learn from me, you have to take my yoke. Take whose yoke? The yoke of Jesus Christ. Because my yoke is light and easy. If you take your own life yoke, yoke of your life, it must be very heavy, 
burdensome, difficult. You have to manage to take carrying all that. But my yoke is light and easy. While we are carrying the yoke of the Lord and for the church of God, this is very light and easy and we can carry with joy and happiness. So while you are doing the work of God, you may say, and Satan may tempt you, Satan may deceive you, telling you, you are doing labor in vain. All the, spend, all the energy and all the strength that you spend is nothing, in vain. You are doing fool. But God knows all that works that we are doing before the Lord. Amen. So all that payment comes from who? All that payment comes from God. Hallelujah. Amen.